Alright guys, it is another, this yuck, miserable, bleh, day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, and I am thrilled to say here on this Friday morning, December 16th, 2016, the little Jingle Bells dog with his little Christmas tree sweater and I, we will be heading off to the Optimus Club to sell Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons, quite possibly for the last time in my entire life I will set foot on a, on a goddamn Christmas tree lot, but before I head off into the snake pit one more time, since it is Friday morning, I'm going to bring you my this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media. I'm sorry, I just open up my email box to bring you more evidence of how this planet is ramming into a brick wall. I got to change this at 67,000 miles an hour. I always thought that we were ramming into a brick wall at 23,000 miles an hour, but I did some research where actually ramming into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. Uh, so how has that been happening while I have been selling Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons? And I just did a short version of this rant. I, I went over this story in a separate rant from New Scientist magazine titled Biodiversity Betrayal as nations fail miserably on conservation. Um, but I will uh, let you go and listen to that, uh, to that rant, because I made a separate little rant. But as long as we're talking about biological diversity, you would think that the Center for Biological Diversity might mention this failing biological diversity scorecard and their roundup, but no, they have other things on their mind. Uh, they start out with new jaguar photographed in southern Arizona. So now we have two jaguars in the United States. Unfortunately, they're both males. So someone needs to get out there to southern Arizona and start releasing some female jaguars. Uh, good Lord, how many, uh, this was the, the uh, title of Wednesday's rant, the United States of Oil. This is Center for Biological Diversity, the head honcho there, that guy named Kieran Suckling, uh, calling Trump's cabinet turning the U.S. into the United States of oil. Every day ups the ante on corruption and greed. Trump is establishing a government that will do everything it can to reward oil and gas corporations, halt any action on the climate crisis, sell off our public lands, and put wildlife and the planet last. And then this is just there, there talking about his cabinet. Uh, you're welcome. I, I've had two full rants about Donald Trump's cabinet. Uh, don't need to uh, go through that again. Here is before Trump even gets there. This new study shows endangered species shortchanged by Congress. A new center study revealed this week that the amount of money the U.S. Congress gives the Fish and Wildlife Service for recovery of endangered species is just three and a half percent of what is needed. Our analysis of federal recovery plans uh, for endangered species show that the agency needs 28 times what it currently gets if species are going to be fully recovered. And no shit, Sherlock, tragically, 
the Trump administration will doubtless move to cut funds for endangered species even further. Do you think so? Okay, as long as we're talking about the uh, Endangered Species Act, Representative Bishop, this is Rob Bishop, Republican from Utah, quote, I would be happy to invalidate the Endangered Species Act. Yes, uh, yep, 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 I'm sure, I'm surprised that uh, this, this fucking planet eater, I'm sure Donald Trump will find a place for him on his cabinet. Here is their never-ending petition to save red wolves. Good luck. Here is the, uh, the EPA actually doing its job as EPA restricts use of eight pesticides to protect species. And this is talking about these little gas cartridges to kill burrowing animals. I have to sheepishly admit, your old eco-Nazi uh, has fired off some of it. Uh-oh, I'm giving away a secret, Glenda. Glenda, I'm going to go ahead and admit it to you, darling. We, we killed that fucking little gopher in the backyard. Yes, I snuck out there and, uh, and I shot off some of these, these little uh, gopher bombs. Your old eco-Nazi trying to protect uh, the organic turnip greens from the, from the gopher. Uh, I fired off some of these toxic bombs, but at least the Environmental Protection Agency is uh, keeping eco-Nazis such as Hambone Littletail from doing that again. Thank you, EPA, for keeping me in line. Okay, I think I'll wrap up with Washington Post energy and environment because I've pretty much covered every story, pretty much every single story on the Washington Post energy and, and environment roundup this week is about Donald Trump's cabinet. Uh, the, the, in Donald Trump's cabinet, the single, it, it's just just pure evil. It, it, it is a snake pit of planet-eating evil that completely leaves. You could combine uh, Ronald Reagan, Daddy Bush, and Baby Bush, and you would not hold a flame to the war against the planet uh, being declared by Donald Trump and his goddamn little merry band of planet-eating pranksters. But anyway, we're going to come back to that because I've kind of drilled that subject into the ground. So let's see what's going on on the rest of this planet outside of Trump's cabinet. Let's go over here to Manga Bay. I've noticed that Rhett Butler is kind of uh, just not talking about the Trump cabinet, I guess. He's just leaving that to everybody else. Let's see. Let's go over there to Myanmar. No shit, Sherlock. Attacks on journalists in Myanmar uh, highlight dangers for the media. Uh, and this is talking about reporting on the illegal logging industry in Myanmar is a damn good way for journalists to get their asses killed. Uh, Myanmar certainly taking its place on the 10 most censored countries list. Yes, it is. And well, we'll see if the United States makes it to that list. Yes, here is this latest story. Uh, about these poor clueless moron indigenous tribe uh, over there in the 
Salween Basin of, I don't know, you get, this, oh, this is still in Myanmar, as this indigenous tribe calls for a peace park instead of big hydropower in their homeland. Yes. Uh, dun dun. From that, here. Yeah, what is going on with the smallest bat in the world? This is the bumblebee bat. Has now flapped to the edge of the vanishing point. There you go. This uh, we're still over there in Myanmar. And the bumblebee bat roosts in caves in Thailand and Myanmar. We can kiss goodbye the bumblebee bat. Oh, uh, some cute little holiday story. Chimp exits war torn Iraq, lands in Kenya. There, there, there you go. Uh, there you go. Leaving war-torn Iraq to land in sub-Saharan Africa. Let's see. What is the scorecard on the Belo Monte Dam? Which, how long has that been going on? For about a year since they opened up the Belo Monte Dam down there in the Amazon. Belo Monte Dam ruinous for indigenous cultures. Yes, indigenous families say serious harm has been done to them when they were uprooted from their riverside homes, forced to give up their sustainable fishing, hunting, and farming livelihoods, and compelled to seek jobs in an economically depressed urban environment. There you go. Uh, D -D. Every day that goes by, there are more dams being built in our country. There are more people affected. There are more rights violated. Yep, yep, yep. From the Belo Monte Dam to Vietnam. Uh, this is the Hanoi Statement. This is the latest uh, way the United Nations is saving the planet through the Hanoi Statement to fight illegal wildlife crime, uh, which is completely out of control in Vietnam as one of the epicenters of the illegal wildlife trade. But don't worry, the United Nations is coming to the rescue. Okay, back to uh, Brazil. No shit, Sherlock, Brazilian gold miners go up against indigenous people. Violence in the Brazilian Amazon is on the increase. Last year, Brazil ranked as the most dangerous nation in the world for environmentalists and indigenous people are especially at risk with 137 killings reported last year, which is a fraction of what the, uh, of what the real number is. And one cause of this violence arises uh, from the conflict between indigenous people and small-scale mineral prospectors, especially gold miners who lay claim to the same lands. Now, of course, what I talked about when I was down there in the Peruvian Amazon back in 2009, who the fuck do you think the, the gold miners are lining up 
to dump mercury uh, in the water. It's the indigenous people. It's the very indigenous, you know, guys, there's, there's no fucking hope. It, it was the Indians in the nature reserve, in the mother of God nature reserve, that were on the front lines of running these goddamn uh, dredging machines, dumping mercury into their own drinking water so they could put satellite dishes on their tar paper shacks. And of course, that's not mentioned in this story. Okay, here is UK green heart restriction could put pressure on Guyana's logging economy. Anyway, uh, moving on to that bullshit. I guess they're just staying in Brazil this uh, this week. Brazilian state invites private companies to run Atlantic forest parks. Yes, uh, we will see if that makes a whole lot of difference. Okay. I need to, uh, we have some planet-eating phone going off in the background. I'm hoping to watch this, uh, this documentary. I need to watch it, this new documentary about this Amazon community fighting oil uh, extraction in Ecuador. Uh, let's see, does it have a link? Anyway, uh, I need to watch that and bring you a review uh, of, this, of this new documentary about President Rafael Correa uh, selling off the Ecuadorian Amazon to the oil companies from Rafael Correa uh, to the lionfish invasion. I have been uh, talking about this for years, especially down in St. Croix last year. Lionfish have now been spotted off the coast of New York. Good God. Uh, they are in New York and heading north. Okay. We were talking about the illegal wildlife trade being centered in Vietnam. What is going on in Peru? Wildlife for sale, an illegal activity out of control in Peru. In the last decade, 383 species uh, have been trafficked in Peru. Peru has 64 uh, species in imminent danger of them, in danger of extinction, and some of them can be found smoked, grilled, or being slaughtered in the wildlife markets in Peru. Yes. Uh, I remember being, uh, when I, I guess I'm no longer a landowner in Peru, when these fucking little uh, planet eaters uh, tried to sell me an anteater that they caught off my own land. Okay. Here is their spin. I mentioned this last week. Giraffes facing extinction. Yes, they have now been rated as vulnerable to extinction. Do you think so? Here's another story about journalists being murdered for reporting on logging, illegal logging. GDD how about this one for the bullshit headline of the week? 
Vietnam forest on the upswing after years of recovery. And, uh, oh, we can thank the United Nations for saving the forests of Brazil. Right next to that story, companies need to do more to avoid deforestation. Yes, uh, this is in this newest report studying 187 global corporations looking at their approaches to avoiding deforestation. I wonder how many of those companies Donald Trump sits on the board of. Uh, here is Interpol says corruption in global forestry sector worth 29 billion dollars every year. Bribery is the most common form of forestry corruption followed by fraud, abuse of office, extortion, cronyism, and nepotism. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here we go. I've talked about this one about President Joko Widodo. Green groups raise red flags over Joko Indonesian President Joko Widodo's widely acclaimed Hayes Law. Yes, anyway. Okay, who is the FSC? I don't know. It's one of these goddamn, uh, probably means forestry. FSC. The F has got to mean forest, and the C has got to mean certification. Uh, it would be nice if they would say what FSC means as a timber processor is put on probation after a scathing investigation. Do you think so? Let's see. Brazil pledges largest restoration commitment ever made. Yes, the announcement follows a recent uptick in deforestation in the country uh, where deforestation levels last year were up 75% over 2012 and Donald Trump's cabinet making their second to the last story. Trump taps climate denier to head the EPA. I think we've been through that. And let's end up in southeast Sulawesi, wherever the hell that is. Expedition finds serious damage to southeast Sulawesi's marine ecosystem. And uh, how about this? No shit, Sherlock. Researchers point out, point to sediment created by the province's nickel mining industry as one of the primary drivers of reef destruction. But uh, just real quickly, I'm going to go down the list since I've already covered this in two full rants my, uh, on Tuesday and again on Wednesday. And, I, and I've already talked about a lot of these stories from the Washington Post environmental roundup, which pretty much is just Donald Trump killing the planet roundup. Here is a Trump team member just compared climate science to the flat earth 
theory. Yep. Uh, here is, I don't believe it. It doesn't have anything to do with Donald Trump. Well, it does. It has a lot to do with Donald Trump, and it'll have a lot more to do with Donald Trump. But anyway, humans have now fragmented the Earth's wilderness into 600,000 little pieces. New research finds that the world's truly roadless areas are mostly quite small and unlikely to be protected. All right, let's see. This is their story about Donald Trump, you know, uh, looking for those names of those people from the energy department who might dare suggest that climate change has some connection with federal energy policy. We've been over that. Uh, here is our new esteemed Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson. Rex Tillerson's view of climate change it's just, quote, an engineering problem. Yes, here we go. I've talked about this one already. Trump taps former Texas governor, <laughs> Governor Rick Perry, to head the energy department he once vowed to abolish. Here is Trump taps Montana Congressman Ryan Zink as uh, Interior Secretary. I've been over that one. We've already talked about the climate myths guiding Trump's team. We've already talked about the Arctic just had its hottest re year on record by far. Uh, Finally, the EPA, I'm going to talk about this one more on, on Monday's rant. EPA changes its stand on fracking, now saying fracking can harm drinking water. Hmm. A, form, a prior EPA report had failed to find widespread systemic impacts from fracking, but wow, the new, port, the new report has found, I guess, widespread systemic impacts from fracking. And of course, as I say, I can't wait to read next year's uh, EPA fracking report from the Donald Trump EPA uh, and when I, when I can virtually assure you, the next EPA fracking report will assure Americans that fracking is good for this country and good for this planet. Talked about this story. Scientists are frantically copying U.S. climate data, fearing it might vanish under Trump. Uh, let's see, shrinking mountain glaciers are categorical evidence of climate change. Here is this stunning Antarctic lake is now, at this point, buried in ice, and that could be bad news. Okay, atmospheric levels of methane are spiking, scientists report. Uh, and we will close as I did on Wednesday with Donald Trump going on the record about his opinion about the science of climate change. Quote, nobody really knows. Nobody really knows. 
And for the second time, we are closing with a quote from our new Planet Eater in Chief. But with that, I am going to wrap up this week's ecological meltdown round and rant because me and the little dog, hallelujah, for the last time in 2016, hopefully for the last time in my life, are heading off to the Optimist Club to sell Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons while this planet heads into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. Bye, guys. All right, little dog. Let's get ready for our last okay. day at the Christmas tree lot.